Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Realm of Unknown. If you are new and joining us, welcome. This is a paranormal and supernatural podcast focused on all sorts of spooky and strange things out there in the world. And if you are someone who has been following us for a little bit of time, good news. We are no longer talking about haunted roads. For the- Instead, we are discussing a uh, cemetery, which is interesting. I think this is the first time that we have actually gone over a, uh, a cemetery before. I, I, I don't believe that we are. No, we talked about Laurel Hill back in episode. Oh, my goodness. I want to say like five or six. I could be completely wrong. I could be completely off the margin, but I'm pretty sure it's one of those early like top 10 episodes. So if you are, uh, you know, interested in that one, go check it out. Otherwise, though, there's not a whole lot of new uh, updates and stuff over on my end with things. I will say if you are interested, please be sure to go check out the Patreon. We are getting a lot more content over there as of late. I've been really trying to focus a lot more on sort of bolstering the backlog and stuff like that over there. That would involve, especially today, because if you are following the last few weeks, after each new episode upload, we are also uploading a short little like news update segment of just like a weird news of the week type thing. And uh, that is immediately uploaded onto the Patreon for all different tiers immediately after each week's episode. So that's four bonus episodes provided to you every month on top of all the other bonus stuff that's being provided there. And uh, you get, you know, your personal RSS feed that you can plug into whatever podcast platform you're listening to so they can listen to it a lot easier. But other than that, I would probably say to... You know, maybe go check out the website. We are getting a lot of the episodes caught up to speed over there as blog post article formats. If you are, you know, more of a reader than you are a listener, that's a really great way for you to enjoy the same topics that everyone else is, but in a different medium. And if you are interested, all the resource links and sources that I've used for researching these topics are also provided there as well. If it's a book or a video, there is a link for you to either go and view it or for you to purchase it. So if you are interested in that, feel free to go check that out. That's realmofunknown.com. And the Patreon is Patreon slash realmofunknown. Pretty much realm of unknown everywhere. But let's get into today's topic. It's a bit of a short one just because of some interesting factors. But again, like I mentioned, we are talking about our second cemetery, And this is the Wildwood Cemetery. And this actually stands as a pretty firm cornerstone uh, here in the Keystone State as a resting place for a lot of, you know, very prominent figures of that area and to Pennsylvania itself. And I'm sure if you're from this general as a sort of like section of the United States, uh, you're probably a little bit confused because you're like, Wildwood? Probably, what, what, like, Jersey? Like, no, I I was confused, too. I thought the Wildwood Cemetery was actually in Wildwood, New Jersey. It's not even in a place called Wildwood. It's actually located in uh, Loyal Stock Township here in Pennsylvania, and it's located just a slight bit north of Williamsport, which, if you are looking on the map, Loyal Stock Township is pretty, like, north central pa pretty close to the new york border but not exactly on it that's just like a general area of where it's currently located and stuff i say currently because a lot of william uh, wildwood cemetery was uh converted at some point so the grounds were established all the way back in 1863 as the main cemetery to be used for williamsport and the surrounding counties The cemetery rests at about 340 acres, and this currently, to this day, stands as the largest cemetery by both size and also grave count within the Lycoming County, which is the even bigger encompassing area. And as mentioned, this was formed in 1863 on August 18th, to be more exact. 
and the collective prospect of several very prominent members of the local community are to thank for this cemetery becoming a thing. And uh, a lot of these, you know, patrons and people who supported the founding of sort of incorporating Wildwood Cemetery Company into the primary location for the town, uh, a lot of them and their extended family members are buried there and are on the grounds to this day. And Wildwood Cemetery, uh, let's talk a little bit about, like, what it is, essentially, because how it's kind of laid out also plays into a lot of the myths and folklore that we're going to be talking about in just a moment. So Wildwood Cemetery overall is very historically significant. Like I mentioned, a lot of the very prominent families of that area, these aren't like major, major prominent people, but you know, it does include uh, U.S. representatives for the state of Pennsylvania, uh, famous, not super famous, but well-known-ish sports stars for both, like, football and baseball. There's a lot of local uh, figures, again, politicians, firefighters, just, like, your general, if you can kind of think about, like, cemetery with a lot of locally known people, and that's what you can kind of think of with Wildwood Cemetery. But on top of that, there is also a significant amount of local folklore. So the cemetery itself is not too, too big. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't really extend super far. The cemetery itself is actually split down the middle by what is essentially the main road for the cemetery. I believe the road was there before, but it very much acts in the case of the main primary road that you're going to travel up and down on the cemetery with. And this creates a rather unique experience when you come and you visit the location again especially when you have an understanding of the local folklore of the specific spot so the mythology surrounding the cemetery is very like i mentioned uh very much rooted in that split and the sort of divided setup of the cemetery itself the western side of the cemetery is actually you know quoted as being the sort of evil or haunted side of the cemetery. This side actually houses the military memorials and monuments, along with a fairly significant grave landmark called the Praying Hands Mausoleum. And meanwhile, the eastern side of the cemetery is quoted as being the, you know, the good side or the, I guess, malevolent side or benevolent, I don't know. It's the good side. And this side of the cemetery houses the sort of main center. This would be for most of the, you know, generalized grave stones, as well as the crematorium and the offices, along with some of the more larger and public mausoleums. Furthermore, the myths and legends may also be due to the fact that the western side actually tends to have a lot more of the older burial plots than the eastern. And the eastern side of the cemetery is still actually used to bury more recently deceased individuals. Hello, kiddies. It is only me, your friendly gravekeeper. And welcome to the Ohio Hauntings and Legends podcast. We will be taking you to places you have never dreamt of. Hundreds, if not thousands of haunted and abandoned locations. We will visit with the paranormal of your nightmares. Try to understand the unexplained. We will hear some old-time ghost stories that were told around the campfires years ago. Ohio has 88 counties within our state, and virtually each one of those counties has a story to tell. Ohio's history is bloodstained throughout its history. There are legends to tell, tales that have gripped towns and cities across Ohio for centuries that have been told as true events. 
Many of the forthcoming episodes are real. Others may be hearsay or legend. It is your choice to believe or not. Dim the lights, grab the blanket, and get ready for fear to visit you. So there is definitely like a time gap between both sides of the cemetery, hence why people believe that the western side is, you know, the more haunted, generally speaking, and this might be a factor that goes into play for that. So what about, you know, the ghosts or the spirits of the location? Interestingly enough, the east or the, yeah, the eastern side or the good side of the cemetery is not without its ghosts. The rumors and sort of folklore surrounding the split of the cemetery have it so that the good side is actually rumored to be occupied by sort of fairy-like entities that would always pop up and appear during clear nights and only on clear nights, while the, you know, the bad side, the western side, is filled more with both malevolent spirits and a bit more of the particular haunting experiences. In particular, one of the actual, like, entities, not spirits, that haunts this uh, the western side of the cemetery is actually said to be a banshee, which is a little, you know, surprising here in Pennsylvania. But there is supposedly a banshee who resides at the top of the hill along that, you know, western side of the cemetery. And oftentimes, the banshee can be heard singing a very sorrowful song. From what I can understand, there's not a whole lot of screaming with her. It's just a lot of singing. But you might, you know, find this a little bit odd. You probably are somewhat familiar with banshee lore and mythology. And you're probably wondering, it's like, hey, aren't those supposed to be like an omen of death? Like, you hear them, and then, you know, you or a loved one is going to die? Well... Traditionally speaking, yes, this is, you know, part of the truth. And if you're not familiar, banshees do derive from Irish folklore. Uh, this particular, there's very, you know, similar spirits elsewhere. But the banshee, on top of, you know, being associated with being an omen of death and everything like that, is actually fairly often linked to a sort of, not a phenomenon, it, it, it's an actual thing, but... They're oftentimes linked to the mythical, I think I pronounced that right, over in Ireland. And the Chamuli are actually burrows into the ground or burial mounds that are built on top of graves and generalized grave sites. And these can be found pretty much throughout the Irish countryside. So there is a precedent for banshees to reside within essentially graveyards, particularly on the peak of the hills as they're oftentimes said to sort of live there slash guard there. And I, I don't be believe I saw anything in relation to them being tied to specific families, but a lot of those, you know, grave mounds would kind of have that effect. So I guess you could maybe lean into that but the idea of you know a banshee residing in a in a grave in a grave site with you know a hill that it's residing on the top of is actually not too far fetched and i don't you know see any reports or accounts of this particular banshee in wildwood cemetery having the same properties of you know being an omen of death as you know her irish cousins and additionally within the cemetery there are a lot of very small mausoleums. With several of them, it is rumored that if you go up to them and you press your ear up against it, you can actually hear knocking sounds and voices coming out of the mausoleums. These, you know, are locked up. No one should be in there, at least alive, from what I can understand. And oftentimes it sounds as if, you know, the conversations are being had between the deceased inside the mausoleum, which is creepy because I've been inside mausoleums before on a tour, and I don't know what I would do if, 
we just heard like tapping from from where the the you know the graves are inside of it. Additionally, there is one more sort of entity, I suppose, when it comes to you know the the Wildwood Cemetery, and this is a statue called the Crying Lady. So the statue rests on top of a grave that can be spotted from the central road. Like you don't actually have to go up to it in order to see it. It's a very well-known landmark within the cemetery itself. And the crying lady is actually said to act like literally cry. Again, this is a statue, like I believe it's copper from what I can kind of tell. It looks very much like a rusted oxidated copper statue but it's said to actually cry like real tears and just sob on its own and furthermore it is actually said to shift and like change position on her pedestal uh i do not know of any accounts in which she actually you know gets up and walks around like a lot of you know statues seem to do for some reason but in a lot of cases it is said that she kind of shifts in place or she moves her arms uh, a lot of times this happens overnight so people who are either frequent to the cemetery or work there will report her in one position the day before and in a completely different or slightly adjusted position come the following morning there's no actual proof of this. There's no like recordings or anything, it, but it is part of the cemetery's lore, and I wanted to mention it. And the final rumor that I kind of want to talk about with Wildwood Cemetery is something to do with the phenomena of being buried alive. So there are rumors within the cemetery that kind of tie into the final resting place of a local firefighter. This man goes is known by the name of Thomas Persley, and uh, Thomas had a pretty understandable fear. He was pretty scared of being buried alive or being presumed dead and then buried and then waking up. And this, you know, phobia essentially got like so so intense that it led to him actually constructing designing his his mausoleum and his family's mausoleum for such a scenario so that it can be locked on the outside but escapable from the inside this you know was very different from what it was before i'm sure you're if you're you know into the paranormal you're into sort of creepy stuff you're familiar with that, like, back in the day, cemeteries would oftentimes have little bells in the cemetery. And if you hear the ringing of the bells, it's because there's a string attached to it that goes down into the grave. And it goes into the coffin that the person was buried in. Because, hey, they were alive. And they're ringing the bell to let you know that they are still alive. Thomas took this to a whole new extreme with his sort of mausoleum construction in which he you know he did a very similar thing you're able to like you know reach out to be like hey we're still down here but you know not, not everyone's in the cemetery at all hours of the day and it's big so he went the further step of providing like food rations inside of the coffin that you're buried in he like put in you know bread i believe it was for like enough for you to kind of get by along with like tools uh, he put tools in there for you to like escape the tomb somehow obviously this is a mausoleum it's not like an actual actual grave so you don't have to like dig your way out but there's like a skylight so that you can like get out of the, the the mausoleum it's crazy this dude was very much scared of dying and not being dead but there are rumors and alleged hauntings in relation to the mausoleum that thomas created and the rumor is uh, very much the same as the other mausoleums in the cemetery, that if you were to walk up and place your ear up against the wall, particularly on Thomas's tomb, I did not see anything in relation to his family who are also buried alongside him. If you were to press your ear up against the tombstone on Thomas's side, you can actually hear him like 
shuffling around inside of his coffin. Like, he's not talking, he's not really doing anything, but he's, like, moving around slightly in the coffin, and the rumor goes that he's waiting. He's waiting for, like, the right time to get out of the mausoleum, but I, I guess something went wrong, or his his plans were not perfect, and he is still in there. And that's kind of how the rumor goes. And I'll be posting, you know, photos of this sort of stuff over on social media and on the Patreon for you to enjoy. And it, it, it's an interesting looking mausoleum. I'll, I'll post a photo of, there's like an old timey photo where two of the coffins are actually still not used yet. So you can kind of see a, a sense of scale uh, and a sense of how tight it is in there. But for the most part, that is it for Wildwood Cemetery. It's... An interesting cemetery. It's definitely not, I would say, the most haunted, even though there are, oddly enough, some reports out there that say it is. I would personally not say that it is. It's still an interesting haunt, and it is, for me, at least very interesting that there are essentially, like, creatures that live there rather than just you know, generalized ghost sightings. For the most part, people don't really see ghosts too much. They, the, the, any like physical or apparition type stuff is pretty exclusively kept to the fairies and the banshee. And I wasn't really able to find too much in relation to the sort of you know, ethnic roots of the people buried there in order to confirm a few things. But it's pretty safe to say that, you know, I mean, he, me growing up in Pennsylvania, there are two two or three, like, very prominent white families of, you know, Italian, German, and Irish. Like, the Irish is, are very big here in Pennsylvania. And I think that perhaps some of the Irish folklore of fairies and fae-like creatures, along with the Banshee, may have translated into the cemetery that they have here in the United States. And I think that that's very interesting, and that was a topic that I kind of wanted to discuss and go over with you guys. Uh, if there are any local cemeteries that you kind of want me to look over, definitely feel free to send it my way. Uh, reach out to me on social media with Realm of Unknown, you know, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or send me an email at realmofunknown at gmail.com. And again, if you want to help support the page of the podcast, check out the Patreon. That's Realm of Unknown at pa- uh, you know, patreon.com slash Realm of Unknown. And over there, we got lots of, you know, extra bonus goodies. Like I mentioned before at the top of the episode, we have bonus sort of weird of the week segments after every single episode of the normal podcast. So for every month, along with bonus series that are currently in development and being published, along with behind-the-scenes content, updates on ongoing projects, as well as some information and sort of collected, maybe evidence, uh, of investigations that were currently ongoing. Like, we have a big old dump of audio recordings that may or may not have something in it from Laurel Hill Cemetery that I investigated, video tour recordings from Eastern State Penitentiary, as well as a lot of photos I collected during my visit to Jim Thorpe here in Pennsylvania of the haunted mine and also just of the town itself. So there's lots of goodies if you want to go check it out. There is a one, three, and five dollar tier list. As you go up, obviously more things get unlocked, but for every single tier, you will get a lot of the bonus series so feel free to check it out and if you don't aren't able to i should say support the podcast financially please feel free to do so with a those always help a lot Uh, especially for my dumb butt because i do not do this enough and i'm not very consistent so i'm sure algorithms hate me but until then i hope you guys did enjoy this discussion for this week and i hope to see you guys next time remember to stay spooky Thank you.